Hello and welcome back to my craft room. Well, it's an exciting day today because I'm uh, going to show you what I came up with for our Inspired by Alice collab. This is a creative collaboration with some arty friends here on YouTube and Instagram. It's our third one. We're going to do it kind of quarterly. The first one was inspired by fairy stories. The next one was inspired by forests, woods and trees. And this one was inspired by Alice. Uh, the idea is that we create something. It doesn't have to be a drawing or painting. It could be any creative project. It could be sculpture, photography, cake making, quilting, anything. But it has to be inspired by this theme. You can join in as well if you like. If you'd like to create something and post it on Instagram or Facebook or in the Arty Farty Annie group on Facebook and use the hashtag inspired by art collab. I will put links to all this below. I will also put links to my fellow collaborators so you can go and check all them out. I'm dying to see what they've all done. It's a, they were a really good mixture of um, different styles and approaches. And yeah, it, it was, it, it's such a, it's such an amazing theme. There's such a lot of scope. So yeah, I, I expect to see all sorts of uh, wonderful things from all the others. Um, I've just been a bit, mine has been a bit touch and go. <laughs> I'm not altogether delighted with what I've come up with. I decided I was going to have another go at um, Lido printing and then I wanted to experiment with adding colour to it. Um, I wanted to kind of explore what I think of as a, the sort of darker side of, of Alice. To me it's more nightmarish than dreamlike and uh, I used to have recurring kind of nightmares as a kid about things being all kind of the wrong scale, me being stuck in places I couldn't get out of and um, and everything being the wrong size and I think I had the dreams before I heard the story but I couldn't be sure but anyway so I was trying to um, um, explore that side of it I've got a couple of other things I want to do which I will start now so you might see a couple more videos over the next week or two I will carry on checking the hashtags for a couple of weeks and then I'll round up everybody's work and all you know all, all of any of you who want to join in as well and I'll put together a video and showcase all the all the different pieces that was really fun doing that last time I'm going to show you my lino print so this was I, I did this a few days ago it took it took a while to I had to do the sketch first then I had to transfer that onto my lino and um, carve the lino and then do the prints and then wait a few days for it to print so it's been a few days process and then the colouring as well so here we are here's my finished here's my finished print I made 10 prints in the end so that I'd have lots to experiment with can't hold it at the right angle um I think it does kind of I'm not I'm not altogether happy with it but um, it was an interesting thing to do. I enjoyed doing it. I think it does kind of capture that nightmarish feeling that, that I was going for. I won't show you the coloured ones right now. Um, I'm going to save them. I'm going to put them in a separate video. Have I already said that? Um, yeah, uh, I'll, in a minute I'm going to hand over to my few days ago self and uh, just show you some a, a quick look at how at the process but just before I do that I'll show you the other let's go to the desk in a minute so there's the there's the book so I've got this one I think I shared this maybe before so this is one of these this nesting dolls set and I started this probably as much as well, certainly 18 months or a couple of years ago so this is Alice falling down the rabbit hole I'm, I, I made the rabbit hole kind of inside out and you can see um, some of the objects that she passes on the way. So I think orange marmalade is actually mentioned in the book. Obviously keyholes and keys are relevant. Um, I don't know why there's a fish there. I think <laughs> Queen of Hearts crown, there's storybooks here. Um, Queen of Hearts tarts, little hedgehog croquet balls. <laughs> this is um, some of the things are personal and not about Alice at all. So this is, you, you might recognize this. I've always had this thing that I've got inbuilt novelty nose and glasses. Mad Hatter, White Rabbit, the, the cards, some of these are very obvious, the Drink Me Bottle, the Cheshire Cat, <laughs> Key, Toadstool. This is the Patriot logo, this is Patriots are a community on Twitch, a gaming community that I belong to. Um, hearts, Tea Party, Tom and I were making puppets at the time so this is one of the puppet hands. The whole thing of time being, time was really weird in, in Alice wasn't it? It turned out she she'd only been gone for a few minutes when she, you know she'd only been asleep for a few minutes flamingo feather <laughs> butterfly for no reason at all yeah so i've got 
all of these still to do. I think the tiny one is going to be the drink me bottle because that seems the most sensible thing to do with that. <laughs> And then I think with the rest of them, I'm going to go for the scene with the pepper pot and the baby who turns into a pig. <laughs> so this can be the pepper pot. This can be the baby. It can be a baby on one side and a little piglet on the other. This could be Alice, the cook who has the pepper pot and the duchess who's holding the baby. So uh, I love that. It's a very uh, one of the many surreal scenes from um, Alice in Wonderland, um, but one that perhaps isn't quite so well or isn't isn't done so much isn't illustrated quite so much so i thought I'll, I'll have a go at that one and tom suggested which i think is a brilliant idea on the base of these i'll have to do something to finish it off i could have a gradually disappearing cheshire cat smile getting smaller and smaller and smaller as the bases get smaller so i might do that as well so there's that and then i've got this um this is what's left of the box that Johnny sent me, the Uwer box. We sent each other a new Uwer box in January, crafting kit. We're due for another one of them next week. So this is armature wire and pliers and things in there. I've got some Sculpey polymer clay in here and things. Oh, I put them there so I wouldn't forget. And I want to make a figurine, a poseable hopefully figurine of the Mad Hatter. And I want it to be a really mad, mad hatter. I pulled out some of these lovely, these are the recycled Indian fabrics that I get from Bazaar. I've got some velvet and silks and things. Colours are more vivid than they look there. I'm always saying this, this camera makes everything look slightly duller and bluer than it really is. This is actually a gorgeous leafy green, this one. And this one's much yellower than it looks on the camera. So yeah, that's going to be, I, I wanted to have a crazy waistcoat and a kerchief and a um, bow tie and things. I will probably get my felting kit out and felt in a hat. And I've got, um, amongst my miniature stuff, I've got some chairs. I think I can revamp one of the chairs so you could be sitting on a chair at the tea party. So that's my idea. So I'm going to, once I've got this uh, video done, I'm going to start working on these um, but it will probably be a few days before you you get to see the results <laughs> so i'm going to hand over to my other self now okay hope you enjoy i'll see you again in a minute well hopefully my future self has just shown you a successful lido print of this illustration that i've done for our inspired by alice collaboration and she's just handed over to me from a week or so ago <laughs> just about to try uh taking a print off of this for the first time. At this stage I don't know how it's going to go. So this was my original drawing, then I did a tracing of it and I used that to transfer it to my lino and I've just put, um, I, I use little ink pads like this to just run over the surface to kind of give me some idea of if, I've been, if I'm carving away the right, the right bits or not. Um, but I still I won't know until I take a print for the first time wh whether it's actually going to work and then the, what I plan to do is add colour I might try various ways I, I want to do several prints because I want to try various ways of adding colour let's have a look at what I'm going to put that to one side for a minute and let's have a look at what I'm going to use um, I've got I started my, my main kit was this oh that's heavy this uh, artful box that I got. This was my first, I only had three artful boxes I decided, although they're brilliant value, I was just um, tempted to get things that I'd already got quite a lot of and it's quite an expensive box if it's, you know, if it's a lot of stuff you've already got and I have got a lot of stuff. So I'm sticking with my, with my scholar box but nothing against artful boxes, um, I think they're brilliant and I think especially if you're just starting with trying a new technique like with this and you can choose what you want I think it's brilliant this was I was really happy with this so this is what we've got in the kit the magazines are brilliant they're more of a book but there's just loads of information in there and there's supporting videos as well now this was separate you got this was previous <laughs> this is previous prints that I've done You've got a few sheets of this soft liner, which is really easy to work with. That's what I've got left of that. And then you've got the little tool. So basically you've got this, the universal handle. You just loosen up that, whatever this is called. And you put, there's a selection of different shape blades in there. You put in, tighten it up and away you go. Um, 
that's just in there because again I was rubbing it over the surface like I showed you just now and then that one I've got separately then you've got these two colours of inks so since then uh, I loved it so I went and bought myself a bit more I bought myself this gold ink as well because I thought that would be fun and some I also bought some more lino so I wanted to try the other the more kind of traditional traditional lino that stuff now I need to make sure I use this because lino does have it sealed up at the moment so that's good but it does have a life lino it will go rock hard it will dry out and go rock hard so use it if you've got some use it and um, keep it keep it wrapped up I did read somewhere that if it dries up a bit you can try rubbing linseed oil into it and uh, rejuvenate it so if I get any of the dry I will, I will try that so I'm talking about this traditional lino I don't know if the same is true of the soft stuff that came in this kit and then I bought myself this massive one when I was still working at the craft shop um, so I used my discount and bought myself this mahoosive sheet but now I'm scared to use it because it is so mahoosive and it was very expensive <laughs> and I want to do something really special with it and I can't decide um, but I do need to make sure I do something with it before it dries out because that would be criminal um, and the only other thing I bought um, the kit came with a sheet of acetate which we were supposed to use for your inking up sheet and I just found it just I could not make that couldn't get on with it because the ink is quite sticky and as you roll it lifts the sheet and you've got to keep holding the sheet down and get it on your hat oh I couldn't be doing with it so I went and got myself this tray just an inking tray it wasn't terribly expensive I think it's about six or seven quid which is enough but you could probably find something cheaper that would do but just something solid with a bit of weight to it because that acetate sheet couldn't get on with I've also got I had had it for years and forgotten about it this little set similar idea with the tool so this is how you put the blades in you just loosen this up drop the blunt end in tighten it up again and you've got your your blade there so this set comes with these five blades I'm calling them blades yeah um, which will fit nicely inside there and then and you can take that off as well you can screw this whole thing on here and it also comes with these little they've got their sticky got peel off sticky on one side and the carvable surface on the other so you can stick them onto here and and use it as a stamp which I think is brilliant and they it even comes with this template so I, that's where you, I guess you would draw your design you would plan your design so I really must make use of that I totally forgotten I'd got it I saw someone using it now who was it YouTube or I saw it on Instagram if I can remember I'll leave a link to them who was using a very similar thing the other day if, if I remember I'll leave a link but it just made me think oh yeah I've got that somewhere so I've dug it out and I'll keep all this together now so that'll all so I'm just going to use the black ink today oh and this is the other thing that came in the artful kit the brayer it's a nice quality heavy one it's an SD one this SD is a good is a good make associated with them um, screen printing and things and liner printing nice nice heavyweight solid brayer for applying my ink so that's why I use an artful pad so I don't know if this is the one that came with the kit but it, it's a good one to use mixed media pad because whatever media I choose to use to color my print with it will be fine it'll be fine with wet or dry media and it's it's not completely smooth but I think it's smooth enough to take the to do a print let's get a few let's get a few sheets up several hours carving out the <laughs> carving out the lino I might as well get a few prints from it obviously this is already carved um I didn't really see any value in you sitting and watching me carving the lino because I'm not an expert and you know I think you can get better if you want to see how to carve them and and what have you you can you can get better tutorials than I could show you I will try and remember to link up to when I did my first print because I probably showed a little bit of it then but I would say if you want to see how to do a lino print <laughs> probably better to go and watch someone who knows what they're doing but I thought this bit would be quite fun to share with you so this is a little tip I'm, I missed before when I first did this but I spotted on the um, artful in, in the artful book the other day um, is to use a little bit of talc on your fingers to um, 
to stop you getting transferring ink smudges and things onto your work. So I thought, right, okay. So I think the idea is you put a bit on there, and it said also leaves your hands cleaner by the end. So we'll see. I know I do remember that um, you need a, you need less ink than you think. One of the people I was watching said about the same amount as you'd use of toothpaste. Of course, everybody uses a different amount of toothpaste, but that's a surprisingly small amount, isn't it? And they also said, don't bother sort of spreading it all over the tray. Basically, if you spread it bigger than the, the size of the brayer, you're wasting it, really. So I'm going to... That's probably a little bit more than I would use of toothpaste, really, to be honest. Let's see. This is the first one, anyway. And uh, if I remember right, what worked best for me was to, especially because this is quite a big one, is to ink up my my lino and then drop the paper down on top of it. <laughs> so the first step is to start rollering this out. Like I say, trying to keep it in the in the little in a little square that's the size of the um, of the roller. Can you hear? It's making that sticky noise. And once it starts to feel and sound sort of sticky like that, it's about ready to go. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's, should we try? <laughs> this is quite nerve, it's nerve wracking, but it's really fun. And one of the nice things is because this is, it's not, um, you, you could use acrylic paint, but this isn't, it's, um, actual ink water-based so it's easier to clean up um, and it, it means that what does it say formulated for a balanced working and drying time easy to clean up yeah you don't want it drying out too quickly because you can't you can't work with it <laughs> you need a bit of uh, a bit of time to work with it okay I'm gonna go for it <gasps> oh. And the um, the first print undoubtedly will be in that enough one, but you know, let's just do another whole go all over. I'm sticking okay like that. Let's see how it transfers to the paper. I stuffed up the foot a bit there, I think, but wish me luck. I'm going in. I think I'm going to try the slightly smoother side. Now the question is, can I drop this straight? Because once I drop it on, I can't move it again. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly press down all over because the ink is quite sticky and that will hold it in place. I'm just going to use my other this is a speedball one just to press down obviously I don't want to use the one that's covered with ink or get ink all over the back of this it looks like I've got I've slightly missed there so <laughs> all down here potentially could pick up a stripe of black ink so I'm going to try and avoid doing that now if I remember right I then had to get a spoon and use it to press all over the back to really really press down for longer than you think. I'm going to see if I can have a little peek. Yeah, I mean it's transferring, but it's gappy, so I need my where's my spoon? So I've got this little teaspoon. I could use a bigger one, but I find that just doing this and pressing with my thumb seem to work. I'm going to put a bit of spare paper, whoops, over here, so I don't pick up that because I need to go right to the edges. So now I'm pressing down really hard with little circular movements and I've got to do this all over. So I'll probably skip through this bit now and um, come back to you when I'm ready to do the big reveal. I did think about running it through. I have got a big die cutting machine and I'm wondering about running it through there. Let's do it the low tech way for now. Oh, it's hurting my hand, my wrist already. Yeah, I think maybe for the next one, I'll try, I'll try my big die cutting machine. 
because that they do put huge pressure on so that would be a lot easier than doing this okay should we have a little peek right, i'm gonna take it off now oh no that's not great actually it's not too bad I've got I don't think there's any bits this is where now I need to have a look and think are there any bits that I want to carve away a bit more or so I need to look at it quite carefully definitely need more pressure I think I was I did better at the top and as I got more tired towards the bottom it's got I've got more gappage I don't know why there's a funny mark there oh I can see I've got something stuck on it there we go let's get that off so that won't happen next time I don't know how well the talc thing is working can't see any huge bits I've sorted that little problem out there I might just um, I need to get better all over pressure and either need to spend longer doing that I will also try the die cut machine to see if that works and I'm just going to work down now and just carefully work down through the top to bottom just to see if there's any little bits I need to peel away a carve away so you get a variety of different tools um, right down from like this one it does a very fine line it's a it's a it's a small v shape um, and then there's rounded ones as well that's a smaller rounded one um, and then they go up in lots of different sizes the only one I found I didn't use is this one I couldn't I think it's for taking big areas away I just couldn't get on with it so I didn't use it um, so I'm just going to have a smallish round one I think I've no idea what you're supposed to do with all of these I just went on instinct to be honest like I say there are lots of expert tutorials out there if you want to find them in hindsight I'd have left I'd have carved away less in this little area to keep that darker but I didn't think about that until after I'd done it and I mean I could make some of this a bit lighter too so that they go together better but I quite like the darkness there so I'm going to leave it for now I could always change that later if I want to um, I forgot what they call this they call this business or something where you get the little kind of scratchy marks in between where you haven't completely carved everything away um, I almost wish I had more of that here I've, got, I've almost carved it away too thoroughly like here you've got a bit of it here there's not a lot I want to really change that I can change anyway the door's a bit wonky I'm just thinking I might be better to take out this curved line here so I'm just going to take a bit of that away to straighten it up a little bit when you go well um, as I say this is not a tutorial but one thing to bear in mind is don't just like dig down kind of aim to scoop up more of a scoop up like that. otherwise you end up gouging down right into the material you want to scoop up so you can it's a bit messy now because it's got ink on it that isn't dried but I don't want to leave bits on there either because that'll get picked up in the next print another thing that, um, is to always uh, work away from yourself don't go towards yourself these are show up <laughs> um, I think I need to just take a little bit of that foot because one thing I didn't want to do is just make an outline all the way around first um, but I needed to leave leave an outline to on, on the white parts of the leg here for instance um, otherwise they just sort of merged in with the dress so I had to leave a tiny outline there um, and I've added an outline to the shoe to give it some shape there but I haven't carried it on around and I'm just wondering whether to put it in there or it looks a bit funny there as well so definitely not having to do as much tweaking this time as I did the, with my first print so this is this business or whatever they call it here where you've got these scratchy marks left behind and I've I've not left so many marks there but I've left more here and I kind of feel like it's inconsistent so I'm going to take a couple of the marks out of here like this big one very confusing looking at everything back to front okay 
well all that thing about not getting it on your fingers but then you know that is just me maybe without the talc it would have been worse let's put a bit more talc I have two things I've got a, a thing downstairs I'm going to run and get because I think it might help me to put pressure on if I do it by hand and I'm going to get my big die cutter machine out okay so here's my I've inked up my lino cut again I've put my paper onto it and just sort of done a quick run over with a brayer to kind of stick it all down I've been downstairs and got this tool. This is something my son gave me years and years ago when he was still a kid at college. And um, I've used it for all sorts of things in the kitchen. I've, I've used it for all kinds of things. And I just thought it might be a good way, if this doesn't work, this would be an easier way of applying all over pressure. So I've got that to one side ready. But I thought I might as well give this a go. So this is my Humdinger die cutting machine. I've got a little dinky one as well but this one will do A4. It's the Sizzix, uh, what is it, the Big Shop, Big Shop Plus. So um, with these you need uh, various combinations of these cutting plates. So, so now when you're die cutting you use different combinations of these plates to, to apply pressure to different thicknesses of dies if the die is thinner you need a thicker cutting plate to, to apply the right amount of pressure now I'm not sure what kind of pressure I'm going to need to go through here with my lino print so I'm going to have to experiment a little bit <laughs> I haven't got enough room here now I've had to just pull that off quickly uh, now that is a disaster I'm not sure what's happened there I can only think it's just it was just too much pressure so do I try it again or do I just assume this isn't going to work do I try it again with less pressure it looks like it's smudged it's moved as it's gone through and I'm not sure why that is because it wouldn't normally I'm not going to give up on using the um, die cutting machine yep I think what I'm going to do is do it off to one side <laughs> where I, I've got a bit more space because that was a bit of a nightmare so I think I'm going to I'm going to stop recording now and uh, try that again if it doesn't work then I will I will try this one well sadly that's a bit of a disappointment I can't seem to find a combination of, of plates which will apply just the right amount of pressure if anybody's ever done that with a die cutting machine before and could give me any pointers um please do in the comments uh, but yeah I, I, if it was die cutting i would just keep experimenting until i got the right amount of pressure but having to do all of the inking up every time just to find it uh, is a limit to how many times i want to do that also i must say the talc thing isn't working very well for me <laughs> it might be stopping me but transferring it to the paper though I don't know okay so I'm going to go back to low tech and just apply pressure all over with this I'm hoping at least that this will be a lot easier than uh, using my little teaspoon because I can really get some muscle behind it and it's just a bit more comfortable to grip so I'm going to go back to this and I'll come back and show you the big reveal Okay, ready for the big reveal. Better, but it's still not perfect. I wonder if, you know, in, in the course of going back and forth between the um, die cutting machine and stuff, that, you know, the ink started to dry up a bit. I, I don't know. I think it needs to be inked up more i mean although that toothpaste amount might you know it's a bit arbitrary because if you're doing a bigger area surely you'll need more ink so i'm going to ink it up a bit more thoroughly this time and have another go that's this one is certainly good enough for me to experiment on with some of the um different media i want to try with this of course i can always cheat a little bit and ink in where i've lost a line there i can always ink in little bits too who's gonna know you won't tell anyone, will you? <laughs> That's... Is 
it it's just now making that sticky noise and for just feeling it just gets this sticky feeling and that's when it's kind of ready to apply so here we go a bit more generously this time oh can I just can't help myself can I is the first time you ink it up you can see where you've been subsequent times you can't you can kind of see where it's wet though but it does stay wet for quite a long time so that's not foolproof either I'd like to go to a proper printmaking workshop one day have someone show me how to do this properly in person I mean you can get some fantastic online tutorials of course but it's nothing like being shown in person for some hands-on things like this so that was a good generous generous toothpaste amount and I've pretty much used up what was there and I hope I've got an even coverage over my, over my plate drop my paper down <gasps> oh Do you know what? I'm going to go on the other side of that. Let's just let's re ink that bit that I touched a little bit. Okay, let's go on the other side. Oh, I'm so annoyed with myself. At least it's water based inks, not oil based, so at least the clean up is easier. Oh, tomorrow I'm going to think, oh, my arm's hurting. What was I doing yesterday? Oh, yes. I remember one of the tutorials I watched saying that you have to spend an awful lot longer doing this than you think you will. It's feeling quite hard to peel off, which is probably a good sign. It's a lovely noise. Can you hear it? Oh, I think this one's looking pretty good. pretty clear that one isn't it I could still take away some more of that but I think I'll leave it just because it looks more interesting that way yeah okay I think that's the best method um I need to make sure every everywhere is thoroughly inked and I need to go over this until my armor feels like it's going to drop off <laughs> And uh, that seems to do the trick. And then I need to leave these to dry for a while. They're water based, so they don't take as long as the oil based ones would probably, but um, they still take quite a while because they're made to have a longer working time, I guess. And I need to make sure I get like the edges like here. But I can, you know, by the time I've added colour and stuff to it and I can cheat and fill in little lines and things, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay, so I'm going to run off a few more of them now. <laughs> just like that and then I will come back and show you some of the different ways I'm going to try colouring them in. I might just uh, I'll just keep doing it till I'm fed up with it and I've got loads to play with. Okay so I hope you enjoyed that I'm going to make a separate video with my experiments with adding colour to the prints um, and I'm going to go off and enjoy looking at everybody else's videos now. I as I said I will leave links to everybody below uh, I'll, I'll put the hashtag in there um, don't forget to use that if you if you post anything um, inspired by this by this theme. On, um, don't forget as well on Saturday so that's Saturday coming the 4th of March 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. UK time. It's another Saturday night in with Artie Farty Annie. <laughs> this is a special one for my birthday. We've got a special guest coming on and we've got three giveaways. Two scrawler boxes. One is being kindly donated by scrawler box. Also I'm going to do one of my hand stitched art journal wraps which you might have seen me doing it um, if you're a regular viewer um, I will custom make it for the person who wins you can enter the giveaways for those now and I will leave links to those below as well there are three ways you can enter via Facebook Instagram or, or by joining in the live chat during the stream and you can do all three all the links you all the details you need below okay right excited gonna go off and uh, have a look at all the others now <laughs> I'm saying that even though this is that I'm making this like a couple of days before but I'm already excited so <laughs> see you again soon <laughs>